Okay, again, thank you for coming. This is our rent stabilization program on rent, rent increases, and rent decrease petitions. It is Wednesday, July 20th. This is a tenant focused webinar, and we are going to be specifically talking about rent stabilized apartments tonight. We're not going to be talking about mobile homes or mobile home spaces. Um, so I don't think we have any mobile home tenants here, um, but if you are, we are planning a separate special uh, webinar to talk about rent and rent increases for mobile homes. So let's get started. All right, as a reminder, city staff cannot give any legal advice, but we do offer tips and best practices um, about the city programs and how they affect your rental unit. All right, so for introductions, my name is Andrea Kennedy. I work for the City of Mountain View's Rent Stabilization Program. We also have Anna Jimenez on the line in case we need Spanish uh, interpretation later on in the evening. A quick overview of how the webinar is gonna work. I'll be giving the presentation and then you as members of the public can use the Q&A icon to ask your questions. Or if you prefer, you can just raise your hand and we can have you speak that way. So we'll be splitting the webinar up into a couple of chunks. We'll ask questions um, and open it up for Q&A at the end of each section and then again at the end of the webinar. So we're going to cover tonight. Uh, first, we're going to look at which units are covered by the CSFRA. And then we'll look at what rent increases are allowed and what type of notices are required. And then we're gonna look at tenant hardship petitions and we're gonna finish up with resources. So first let's talk about covered units. So as some of you know, the CSFRA actually stands for the Community Stabilization and Fair Rent Act. And that was a voter approved measure by the uh, residents in the city of Mountain View. And it's meant to stabilize the community by reducing housing turnover in certain rental units. And it does that in three main ways. First, by stabilizing rents, which is what we're focusing on tonight. So every year there is uh, a rent percentage, a rent cap that is announced. The second way it stabilizes the community is by providing eviction protection. And then the third way is by ensuring that landlords still have a fair rate of return on their property. For background, let's look at which units are actually covered. So most buildings in Mountain View actually are covered by our local rent stabilization law um, because they were built before the law went into effect, which was on December 23rd, 2016. However, there are two different types of covered units in the city. We have fully covered units and we have partially covered units. Our fully covered units have to abide by both the rent stabilization part, so the rent increase uh, limits and the eviction protections. Whereas our partially covered units only have to follow the rules for the eviction protections. And the difference is, that our fully covered units were built before 1995 and our partially covered units are built between 1995 and 2017. All right, so let's take a quick stop there. Are there any questions about who is covered? I'm pretty sure our caller knows that she is covered, so we will continue. <laughs> But again, feel free if you have any questions, just type them in right when you think of them or raise your hand and we'll stop at the next section break. All right, so now let's take a look at rent and rent increases that are allowed. So first we wanna talk about what is included in rent. So the Local CSFRA law has a, a specific definition of what rent includes. So we want to look at what is your initial 
rental rate when you move in. We also want to take into account any fees that are also included when you're moving in. So something like a parking fee that you pay, a pet fee, uh, any utilities that your landlord has said that they're going to pay, anything maybe like a storage fee, and any other housing services that are provided um, as part of your rental agreement. That is all going to be included in rent and how we define rent. And then once we know what our base rent is, that initial rent there, we can look at what our allowed rent increases. So allowed rent increases would be what we call the AGA, which is a, a fancier way of saying um, the allowed rent increases for the year. So it stands for annual general adjustment. But when we say that, we're just talking about the rent increase that is allowed for that year. So that's allowed. We also have landlord petitions where they can petition the city to get a higher rent increase for the rental unit above what's allowed for that year. And then there's also something that's more common. It's called a banked rent increase. And we're going to talk more about that in just a second. So the other thing I want to um, point out our deposits. So let's talk a little bit about deposits. So deposits are not going to be included in the definition of your rent. They cannot be increased during your tenancy. So anything like a security deposit that you pay before you move in, or maybe you have a pet and you were required to pay a pet deposit for um, your pet before you moved in, those things cannot be increased during your tenancy. So it's just the one time uh, deposit, and then that's it. So now let's look at the AGA or the annual rent increase that's going to be allowed coming up for the fiscal year 2022-2023. Okay, so our AGAs or our, our annual allowed rent increases, they're the allowed percentage of rent increase that is allowed to be applied to CSFRA covered units for a specific year. And we announced these rent increase percentages um, in June, but they cannot take effect until September 1st. So this next rent increase that we're going to be talking about, here it is, is 5%. However, it cannot start being implemented until September 1st, 2021, and it runs through August 31st of 2023. And then of course, in September 1, 2023, we'll have the next rent increase that's allowed for the year. So the other thing we wanna remember about rent increases is that they can only be increased every once every 12 month period. So if your landlord is going to give you this upcoming rent increase starting September 1, they'll give you the 5% starting September 1, and then they're going to have to wait a whole 12-month period until they can give you the next rent increase. So that's always important to remember. If you're receiving more than one rent increase in a year or in a 12-month period, you definitely want to come and talk to us. Um, so we can take a deeper look into what's going on there. Okay, so now that we know what the upcoming rent increase amount is going to be, we want to ask the question, are there any other allowed rent increases that I might be seeing coming up in the future? So this is when our banked rent increases come into play. So Banked rent increases are rent increases that were not previously charged by your landlord. And I wanna talk about this because I've been seeing recently that a, a handful of our landlords in Mountain View didn't give many rent increases during COVID. So maybe you didn't see a rent increase in 2020 or 2021. And so, that is what we call a banked rent increase. They didn't use it so they can save it for later. So you might see 
the upcoming rent increase along with one of those unused rent increases combined, and that's a banked increase. However, it is important to note that the total rent increase cannot exceed 10%. And I'll have a list here of just what the other rent increases in previous years were in case um, we're not sure. So last year, the 2021-2022 period, it was 2% before that 2.9. And then you'll see it hovered a little bit there around 3.5%. And we'll be giving this PowerPoint out so you can refer to it in the future if you're looking at your past rent increases. All right, any questions? Let's stop here again. Any questions about rent increases or banked rent increases in particular? Let me just go ahead and take a second to check the Q&A. Okay, perfect. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and continue. All right, so now that we talked about the actual rent increase, let's talk about how the landlord's going to notify you about this coming rent increase. So there are a couple of things that the landlord is required to do. The first thing I'll talk about is a required information sheet. And this is a, a one pager front and back, or a two pager, I guess, front and back, um, that gives a summary of your protections under the CSFRA. And so this notice is to be provided anytime you have a new lease or if there is a rent increase for any unit that's covered by the law. The next thing we're gonna look at is the time period in which the landlord should give you notice of your rent increase. So under state law, they have to give you at least a 30 day notice before they implement the next rent increase or before the next rent increase is due. So for example, if they're going to use the 5% rent increase starting September 1st, they should give you the notice 30 days before that it's gonna start. So you might be seeing something coming in around August 1 about the upcoming rent increase. All right, and again, we wanna remember that we only get that one rent increase per 12 months. Now let's look at banked rent increase notices. So it's similar in that you still will get noticed 30 days before the rent increase kicks in, but the landlord also has to send a copy of that notice to the rental housing committee or the city so that we're aware of it. And it also has to have some extra text in it. So let's look at that now. Here is an example of a banked rent increase form. So let me see if I can get my cursor here. So you'll see here um, the current rent increase amount, which is 5%. And then there's a section in here where they can list out which of the banked rent increases they're going to apply to your rental unit. And so once they fill that out, we'll have a total rent increase amount, but it can't be above 10%. And then on the back side of the page here, we have our required text. And it's gonna give you some information about rent increases and what bank rent increases are. And then it also gives you information about a tenant hardship petition, which we're gonna talk about just now. Oh, but I do also wanna mention before I forget that the this is a picture here of the required information sheet. So you'll see it covered many of the things we talked about today, about who's covered, what the protections are, and rent increases. But it also goes into some information about eviction protections as well. All right. Before I get into the tenant hardship petitions, is there any any questions? Are there any questions about that? 
can type it in the Q&A or raise your hand. Of course we do have a small group today. So any questions about any of the topics or if you want us to cover something again, um, we're, we're more than happy to do that. Okay, so let's jump right into hardship petitions. All right, so we do have a petition process in the city of Mountain View. And for our tenants, there are a couple of different petitions. We're gonna to focus today on a hardship petition, but in general, petitions are a way to initiate a request for an adjustment in your rent. And it basically explains and documents the basis for the rent adjustment. So as an example, we're gonna be talking about a hardship today. So you'll have a hardship and then you use documentation and you fill out the form to explain what that hardship is. And this process establishes a fair and transparent procedure for our tenants and our landlords. And in the process, it notifies all the parties of the pending petition and allows every side to participate in the process. All right, again, I mentioned there are a few tenant types of petitions. There is an unlawful rent petition. So if you feel like you're paying um, more rent than you should be under the law, there's a petition for that. There's also a petition for maintaining the habit of habitability in your rental unit. And then there's also a petition for maintaining the services and maintenance that um, you had when you first got into your lease. And then we have the hardship petition, which is what we're gonna talk about. And the reason we're talking about a hardship petition is because um, this is a petition that you can file if you've received a banked rent increase that is gonna cause a financial burden or a hardship on your ability to maintain um, a, a lifestyle that um, you can actually live with, right? So we don't want people to be unable to maintain a life and pay for groceries or those really essential things in their life because they're receiving these banked rent increases. All right, so let's talk about when a person can actually claim a hardship on a banked rent increase. So this one, I wanna be really clear about, this can be claimed when the rent increase is greater than the AGA or the rent increase that's allowed for the year. So you'll see that we have the 5% rent increase starting September 1. So if you get a notice for the 5% rent increase plus some rent increases from the past years, then you can claim a hardship petition. But if you're only receiving a rent increase for the current year, the 5%, then it wouldn't be a time to claim a hardship petition on that rent increase. And so I hope that that's clear. If there's any question about that, please type it in the chat. All right. So if you receive a rent increase higher than the allowed AGA for the year, it will be because either a landlord had filed a petition to increase the rent or they used one of those banked rent increases. The other thing that comes into play when we're talking about hardship petitions is income eligibility limits. So if you meet all of those criteria, then you would be able to file a hardship petition. So let's look at what the eligibility criteria are. So you'll see over in the right in these colorful boxes here, there are five different reasons that you can claim a hardship. And there then are different income limits for those reasons. So the first one we'll talk about is 
that there's inadequate household income or the household has a severe rent burden placed on them by these um, additional rent increases. So to qualify for this reason, the household, the total household, has to make 100% of the area median income or less, or they have to pay 50% of their household income towards the rent. So it, it can be either or of those income limits, and then you would qualify for this uh, for first reason up here. And while we go through this, you can sort of check your income against the chart at the bottom. So you'll see 100% of the area median income is this top line. 120% is this bottom line. And then you'll look as to the number of people in the household and find your information that way. So for the next three reasons, there is this 120% area median income limit, or again, the 50% of the income paid towards rent. And these reasons is that one of the primary residents is a person that is 18 or uh, younger, or a person 62 years or older, or a person with a disability, or that is terminally ill. So if one of these reasons applies to you, and you fall into one of these income categories, you can apply for a hardship petition. And then finally, there is um, a category for other extenuating circumstances. So if you have something else going on in your life or in someone's life that's in your household that contributes to the rent, um, and it is causing a financial burden to have these additional rent increases placed on you at this time, you can file a petition. However, you do wanna make sure that you fill out the documentation, put your reasoning, and then have any supporting documents attached to your petition that can explain your circumstance and why this rent increase would be causing a hardship. And for this one, there's no income requirement, um, but you wanna be sure to have your supporting documents with you. All right, I know that's a lot of information, um, but if something sounds like you might qualify for that, definitely sit down with our team and we can take a deeper dive with you into the petition process. Any questions about hardship petitions? I'll pause for just a minute in case anyone's typing. I'll take a little sip of water. All righty. I don't see anything there, so we're pretty much wrapped up, but I will go over our resources. Here we go. So the first thing that we always like to point out when we start is our website, because we do keep our website up to date. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can sort of scroll through the website. If you'll notice here, I guess at the bottom here is uh, the actual website address. So it's mountainview.gov slash rent stabilization. And once you click on that page, over on the left-hand side, there will be a list of categories and you can click on whichever category you're interested in. So if you wanna look at tenant information or if you actually wanna look at forms and notices or resources, it will all be there for you. And we do have different language options. Uh, if you scroll down to the very bottom of the webpage to the left, you can choose which language you want the page to translate in. All right, and we do also have another web page with some different information. So this web address is mountainview.gov slash COVID-19 housing relief. And we made um, this web page to talk about different resources to help people during COVID. And now we're just sort of transitioning this page to housing resources in general. 
So you'll see different things on here about the Housing and Eviction Help Center, which I'll go over in just a second. There are eviction protections and tenant relocation information, our wonderful mediation program. Uh, we have a link to that program here as well. Affordable housing, homelessness prevention services. You can find all that information on this page. And this page also can be translated in um, all the languages as well. Okay, so this is exciting here, our Housing and Eviction Help Center, which we actually have one tomorrow. If you need help with anything, please join us. We'll be at the Mountain View Public Library. We're on the first floor program room. So you walk right in the doors off to your right, past the elevator. We're in that uh, conference room there. Every first and third Thursday, we're there from one to 5 p.m. And you can just walk in and we'll have a staff person that can help you with uh, whatever issue it is that you came in to see us about. If you're not able to come in person, we also have um, Zoom capabilities. So you can join us at mountainview.gov slash housing help clinics, and we can help you on Zoom. All right, so things that we help with at the Help Center. If you have any questions about the rent stabilization law or your rent increases, you can come to see us in person. And we recommend that you bring any notice that you received so we can look it over with you. If you have questions about affordable housing availability in the city of Mountain View, uh, rent or utility assistance, eviction protections, again, our mediation services are wonderful. So if you're interested in that, you can find that at the Help Center as well. We have legal referrals for people who've received termination notices and also connections with different community organizations that do things like food distribution, family services, mental health services. So we really encourage you to come in and get some help if you need some help or just to see what we're about and pick up some flyers. All right, so next is our contact information for our program. If you need, any help or have any questions, you can call us or email us at mvrent at mountainview.gov or our phone number is 650-903-6136. All right, next we'll talk about some more webinars if you're looking for additional information. We have a, a hybrid webinar tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock. In person, it will be at the library, at the Eviction Help Center, or you can join us on Zoom by going to mountainview.gov slash RSP webinars, the same link you used to join tonight. So tomorrow at four, we'll be going over how to apply for and prepare your application for below market rate and affordable housing. That will be bilingual, English and Spanish. And then our next webinar, this will be only online, is going to be August 17th at 6.30. And it will be an interactive webinar. So we'll actually be showing you how to file a hardship petition. We'll be pulling up the screens. We'll be filling one out with you and answering your questions live on the spot. And we'll be doing that bilingual as well. And for other questions or one-on-one -on -one support that you might need, we also have office hours every single Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Now, I know for uh, some tenants, they're working during that time. So if that doesn't work for you, just go ahead and reach out to us and we can schedule a time outside of that um, and make something work where we can do one-on-one uh, -on -one support. Okay, so this page here is just a little overview of some legal resources. So we have um, Community Legal Services of East Palo Alto. They actually are on 
virtual joining our Housing and Eviction Help Center every first and third Thursday. So if you need help from them and you wanna do it over Zoom, you can join our help centers or you can give them a call at 650-391-0354. There's also the Law and Foundation of Silicon Valley and Bay Area Legal Aid. Okay, so I know that was quick, but any questions by the end of the workshop? Any questions about rent increases or hardship petitions? So while you're finishing up, if you're typing any questions or if you wanted to raise your hand, I will just mention that we will be sending a copy of this PowerPoint out to you by email, as well as a copy of the recording. And in the email, there will be a little link at sort of near the bottom that asks you to fill out a survey. If you have a minute or so, please fill out the survey. Let us know how the workshop was, if you found the information helpful, and definitely let us know things that we can improve on or tailor to our tenant community better. All righty, let me check for questions. Perfect, no questions, but great information. Thank you, and I really appreciate you coming, and definitely be sure to reach out to us if you have any questions in the future. Okay, perfect. I, I think that's the end of the webinar for the night. So thank you very much. Have a great rest of your evening. Stay cool and stay safe. Bye.